Applying for the job is actually the easiest part, right? You fill something out, you hit send, and then you wait patiently for your offer to interview. But the thing is, there are sometimes hundreds or thousands of CVs being sent to these job adverts. And if you want to have that interview, you've got to stand out at the application stage. Today's video is going to touch on how you can stand out as an applicant applying for jobs in bio data science. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Georgia and I've been a bioinformatician for over three years now. I've had an internship and two full-time paid positions in bioinformatics, so I think I'm quite well versed on the whole application shenanigans. I've also sat on recruitment panels, so I think I've got some tips of advice to share with you guys to help you stand out at that application stage. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Everyone else probably has the same background as you. They probably have a bachelor's or a master's or, you know, maybe a PhD. Most people have education applying for these roles. If you want to be different and stand out, you've got to have something else to give that isn't just a master's in bioinformatics because, you know, everyone who graduates from these programs doesn't just get a job straight away. It's the requirement, but it's not enough. So what do we need? What else do we need? I'm going to tell you right now. Disclaimer, there are many ways to stand out in the application process. And I'm just going to touch on a few of the ones that I found helpful during this video, but definitely go and search for the other ways to stand out because this list is kind of limitless. So from Georgia's personal opinion, which again, Georgia's personal opinion, I always think that standing out in bioinformatics, yes, it's about your technical skills, but it's also about your non-technical skills. If you are a bioinformatician who can do more than just sit at a computer in isolation and code, you are a really valuable team member. You know, when you get into the world of work, it's not just about fixing your own problem. It's about working in a team with people on the same level, people on a lower level and people on a higher level. You know, having the ability to go beyond just the tech skills is what sets you apart in my opinion. So the first way I think you can set yourself apart in a non-techie way is to grab yourself some teaching experience. So I say this one because I think sometimes people coming into bioinformatics from a PhD route, they'll have probably done teaching during their PhD. And remember, when you're applying for these bioinformatics roles, some people are coming in with PhDs, some are coming in with masters, and some like me are coming, <laughs> coming in with our bachelors. However, I think it's really key to see and think about how do you compare against the other kind of, you know, avenues into the field. And if PhDs are getting teaching experience, us masters and bachelor's students, like we've got to go get ourselves some teaching experience because we don't have the PhD, but that doesn't mean we can't gain loads of the skills that are built in the PhD elsewhere. So teaching is one of these really important skills because First of all, if you've learned a skill and you can't teach someone else, I don't think you've really mastered that skill. So yes, when we're applying for junior roles, we need to be able to learn, but also you need to be competent to some degree. And you've got to remember, there's always people who are a few years behind you that would really value your help in teaching them something. So even if you are entry level, even if you're a bachelor's graduate, you know, there's first years that would love you to show them something. Also, you got to think about it when you're in the world of work, you're probably going to have to teach other people things that you're doing. Bioinformatics is collaborative. We're not just coding on our own in a whole, especially if you're in a research group, you might have people come in later on who need you to teach them something. Maybe you need to teach the wet lab people how to do something in code if they're having a dabble, like there are people you'll have to teach things to even when you get into this role. So having teaching skills is really good at the application stage to make you stand out. Personally, I started volunteering teaching introduction to Python courses with Code First Girls. And this was so, so good as my first way of teaching because I was teaching wonderful women and non-binary people how to code. And I was teaching them basic Python. It's the stuff I did when I first started. So even though I was entry level, 
it was something I was able to teach. Um, but that was what I did with CFG. There are loads of different other avenues how to teach. I've got friends that have just done freelance teaching. There's also companies that you can teach with, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> maybe have a look into it. But finding a way to teach is just really, really useful for showing that you'd come into that role and actually be valuable to your team, not just yourself. Next up on standing out as an applicant is public engage. Why am I doing jazz hands? <laughs> Public engagement. So public engagement, engaging with the public. To be honest with you, when I was in undergrad, I didn't really know the term public engagement. We had like science communication in a module, but public engagement wasn't a thing. Whereas at the research institutes that I've worked at now, they have specific public engagement teams that do activities with the public promoting science. So there are loads of ways you can get involved with this. So you can either ask your university if there's any things that they're doing or ask your employer if you're like working in wet lab and you want to transition, ask them if you can get involved in their public engagement. If you want to do coding stuff, there's loads of code clubs that kind of happen around the UK, uh, sorry, international people, and you can like join them and then teach people how to code. And it's kind of helping really young kids learn to code. So it's more public. Is that public engagement? I don't know. Anyway, still a great thing. Look up code clubs. And another one is obviously doing YouTube things like I do and just making general content for the internet. There's loads of things you can do to engage with the public. You can also volunteer at science festivals. So when I was in my undergrad, my local town Norwich had a science festival. So I volunteered with them, uh, just like helping set up and run stalls and well, not run stalls. I didn't really run anything. As a volunteer, I just kind of was a body helping organize stuff. Um, but yeah, volunteer at local science festivals. I've also seen loads of like freelance, not free, yeah, like freelance science engagement weekend jobs popping up on Indeed recently. But anyway, I think that is a really great way to make yourself stand out, especially early career, because you've got to think when you're hiring someone to be a bioinformatician, you don't just want them to sit and code, um, and obviously we do code a lot of the time, but you want them to be someone that is engaged in the work that we do because we're not just software engineers, like we are biologists, like we are really interested in the science, we're interested in you know the hypothesis generating and the questions we're answering and what this means as technology unfolds and we can get so much more from our data and more the ethical implications of this. Like there's there's so much we care about in the biology world and doing public engagement shows that you care about that. And I think most employers, you know, would respect that. So my third uh, non-techie thing to do when standing out when you're applying uh, is to evidence your non-technical skills. So I know we've said obviously teaching, public engagement, but there are all sorts of other things that you need in your skill set to be a bioinformatician that aren't just coding. So you need to be a critical thinker, you need to problem solve, you need to be a team player, you need to be collaborative, you need to resolve conflicts. There's so much you need to do and you know if you just write down oh Python, R, Git, great, like everyone's writing that on their CV, what are your skills that are different? So for example on my CV, on my skills section, I have like my data science skills, my bioinformatics skills, and then when I was early career, I had a section that was like my other skills that were like relevant. So I had, you know, operations because I used to work in operations in my bar life. Um, you know, I had conflict resolution. Um, yeah, it's really important to evidence other skills you have. And when you're early career, where have these come from? So maybe you did some voluntary work. Maybe you had a personal caring commitment. Maybe you had a part-time or full-time job that was completely unrelated to science, but gave you skills that are going to set you apart in this application process. So do not neglect your other experiences. You've just got to make sure that you craft them in a way that makes them attractive to you as a bioinformatics employee. <laughs> so now I'm going to move on to the techie things to make yourself stand out. 
Uh, I'm just going to touch on two. So number one, I want to do a whole other video on CVs, but it is the CV. You've got to think that's the first thing that the employer sees and it matters what's on there. So in the UK, don't have a photo. In like America, Canada, do put a photo and then make sure the layout is like easy to read. Um, when you're applying for tech roles, you want to have your skills on there as in like your technical skills because they don't want to have to sift through all the text to know that like you're proficient in Python and you know SQL. So make sure you have skills in the CV and just make your CV attractive to read and no more than two pages. Absolutely. It should only really be one when you're entry level. Two is the max, no more than two. And the final thing to touch on in terms of standing out as an applicant in bioinformatics recruitment is to make sure that you have a GitHub repo with a portfolio on your CV. I've said this before and I'll say it again, but I never made a portfolio on GitHub to evidence my skill set. And when I was changing jobs, it was so frustrating when people were like, oh, can we see like your portfolio? And I was like, no, all my code is like locked behind an internal wall that I can't show you. Like it's so annoying. Um, so now I, I really regret not doing that. So I think honestly, prioritize making a portfolio and having that on your CV to show that you can do code. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope this has been helpful and you are now going to write some killer applications that aren't just going to consist of your degree and some other boring thing that everyone else has. My name's Georgia, this has been Genomics with Georgia. If you've liked the video, give me a like, hit subscribe to the channel for more content about getting into the wonderful world of bioinformatics.